Caitlin Clark scored 40 something. He's phenomenal. And then the second game, UConn's back in the Final Four with their stud, Paige Beckers, who has been to the Final Four a couple of times, won a couple of national titles as well. So it should be a, a fun, must watch TV uh, if you like two tremendous female athletes going at it. Um, there's also a no hitter thrown last night in Major League Baseball for the, for the Houston Astros. And uh, the Gator Baseball, I think, plays FAMU today. And the defending national champs in college baseball, the LSU Tigers, lost at home last night mm. for the first time in, like, I think 20 years to the Southern Jaguars of the SWAC. Mm. Good morning, buddy. You're on the Titan of our hotline, courtesy of Comfort Tilt. What's happening? Good morning to you, Shane. I'm just sort of basking in the after of Caitlin. I mean, you said last night in my program, and you said several times she's the greatest basketball player you've ever seen, and um, and she is amazing. And by the way, the guy's name is Ronel Blanco through the no hitter. He's thirty years old, and you guessed it right. He's from the Dominican. So there you go. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, that's an early no hitter, man. Uh, mm. Good congratulations ever. to him. Yeah, that's first ar- earliest ever, Shane. Earliest ever. So, uh, you know, Andy says here, Caitlin Clark goes for 41 and 12. I think she had seven rebounds as well. Not too shabby. 12.6 million people tuned in. Highest women's college basketball in history. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I don't watch college uh, women's basketball ever. Uh, but I have the last couple of years due to her. But Paige Beckers is another star um, that's had some injury issues at UConn. Uh, she's a point guard as well. So that, that will be good, fun to watch um what else going on buddy shane um, uh you mentioned uh, Paige becker and uh you know of course this sets up for a wonderful final four comparisons will be going back and forth and i thought for a while maybe that caitlin had more her team could handle last night because that issue came on strong and physically they're so bullies they're bullies they they got ahead but then they came back and shot the lights out and uh gio ariyama who's winning his women's basketball coach of all time made a statement obviously for his own personal reasons he said i made a mistake i said Paige becker was the greatest player of all time he said the greatest player of all time ever will is 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 caitlin says she's the greatest ever and ever will be so so the kudos are coming in shane i got to wondering how popular is she how do you gauge that anymore i was thinking about women athletes and i don't couldn't think of one in america that was more popular except Serena Williams. And um, and, and you gauge it today, Shane, by a number of followers you have on Instagram and, and social media. And, and from that standpoint, Caitlin's way down the list. She's not even close. But um, I don't know, if, if, has America not caught up with Caitlin Clark? Because they haven't. They're missing quite a show. And I asked you last night about what you liked about her game, and you said everything, and I do too. I just watch, love watching her compete. I love watching her pass. You said she passes too much. I don't think it's possible. Larry Bird did pass a lot too. But anyway, <laughs> um, but she is a magnificent player, and what a competitor she is! My goodness gracious! And I just love watching her play, Shane. Yeah, I think you know the 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 world we live in now with social media and all the different outlets. You can watch sporting events. Uh, obviously, uh, people know who she is. You know the. The only other girl that comes to mind is maybe Cheryl Miller, Reggie Miller's uh, sister back in yeah, the maybe. She played at USC back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, it's, it, it's, you know, you talked about Serena Williams. That, that's professional from a college athlete standpoint. Yeah, true. I don't, maybe Mia Hamm, you know, back in the day Duke, playing yeah. North Carolina soccer, soccer you know, she went on and played on the uh, yeah. Olympic teams, but. Yeah, it's a it's a great story. It's pretty cool to watch. Uh, I mean, she's extremely talented, and um, we have a couple of texts here regarding her on the Titanomar text line. This is from um, I'm not sure who it's from. As uh, Ice Cube's apparently offered her uh, Caitlin Clark five million to play. Five million to play in that three million. The um... yeah, um, you know that would be interesting it's a it's it's uh i think it's called the big three where it's usually right. a bunch of retired nba guys it's mm-hmm. pretty physical celebrities i don't know how she would i don't well there, there are no celebrities in this this is this is like nba dudes that are retired that go play 
Well, the last uh, two got tour. a few buddies in there. Yeah, I've seen them a couple of games. I don't like them, but I mean, I would not yeah. like to see her go. Uh, Five million dollars just goes to show you what her draw is because there's so much interest in her. She'll make plenty of money off the court in the WNBA. Uh, she will be drafted first by the Indiana Fever for sure. No question about that. Um, buddy, talking college baseball, uh, the Gators, I think in the latest poll, I saw it last night. I meant to screenshot it, but I think we're like number four or five in America. We have nine losses. Man, we have more man. losses in the top 25 than anybody, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't um, just barely. your thoughts right now. Uh, we've played three series. We go out to Missouri. I would, I'm would. i expecting – this is the only time in the SEC uh, – in SEC baseball that I, I expect us to sweep Missouri. I don't think they're – they're not very good at all. Mm. But we should win all three games. Um, I will be disappointed if we don't. The key is to win the series. Just your thoughts, because uh, a lot of Gator fans are still upset that we've lost twice to Florida State. We lose the midweek games. Who knows what's going to happen tonight against FAMU. Uh, but – you can't sit here and question Sully. Sully knows what he's doing. As a forward gear baseball player and letter winner, I don't like them losing those midweek games. I don't like it. I know that apparently it doesn't matter in the scheme of things. It's kind of like the Final Four. It's kind of like March Madness and look what NC State, you know, what they do is 14, 15 games, whatever it might be, uh, and look what they've done at the right time. It's about the timing. Now, I don't understand why it is Sully's pitchers don't seem to be able to although they have in the past, sometimes get ready to play until about April or May. Um, and um, I don't understand the college game. Uh, why, why it is you, you're so capable to lose to some podunk school during the week uh, or get swept by your rival and still be ranked nationally? It's not going to matter, as you said, in the end. It's going to matter who wins at the end who gets it. They've got talent. They've got some terrific hitters and uh but I don't get the word there. The pitching is really spotty, and I guess they'll even get it fixed. He always has. Yeah, they, they're pitching uh, more freshmen than anybody else in America. So it's uh, it's Tony Stez on here, Facebook Live, brought to you by Mount Lawman. This is kind of a goofy place for baseball. Turf field, no one goes. Worst ball play. It's terrible. I saw it. I've seen it both times that uh, we've played football out there. It, it, is, it is not SEC <laughs> It's not even close to SEC really? caliber. It looks like a junior, like worse than junior college, their ballpark. I mean, it's, it is embarrassing. No question mm-hmm. about it. Um, Roger on the Titan MR text line has a uh, text here for you, buddy. Question says, buddy, what are your thoughts on Riley Kugel going to Kansas? It kind of pains me because I think about what could have been. I love Riley Kugel. And he was my favorite player last year. Just because I like to watch him play, and you keep telling me it doesn't matter what he can do, Duncan, it doesn't matter what he can do de- defending. And I kind of came around your way of thinking, and it was proven out this year he didn't fit in this group. And obviously, he and the coach have had some difficulties along the line. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's probably a good thing for Riley to go because he's not going to ever crack the starting lineup. He's a good six man. I love his style of basketball. He'll make three great plays and one stupid play. And I was hoping he'd get that. I think it's more the other way. I think it's the other way around. Okay. Uh, well, one he, great he, play and three stupid plays. Yeah. Well, he, he's not making – he's not consistent. He had that one – what was his last game? He scored 35 or something. He scored a lot of points. Uh, he's capable. I hate seeing players come through there who got such pr- tremendous potential and never realizing it until they're gone. And uh, I wish him all the best. I don't know. What, I have no idea what happened, but uh, good luck to him in, in Kansas. And it's probably a good match, good fit for him, although I can't see him playing uh, uh, Kansas basketball, but we'll see. I um, Good luck to him. Yeah, I think he was initially, as Buck said here, I think he was originally committed to Kansas, then we, we came in and got him. Mm. Um, Brian says on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel. Todd Golden was loyal to Riley Kugel, but my impression is they are not disappointed. He hit the portal, um, and it disappeared on me. Oh, he hit the portal. The Gators will be fine. I agree. Um, you know, maybe he needs a, a new lease on life in basketball. Probably. And Probably. W- wish him well. Right. But, yeah. but as I say, the eye in the sky don't lie. Um, <laughs> he'd make a play here, but he'd blow and not play hard sometimes. So, whatever. Um, 
a lot of people here are talking about baseball on Facebook Live, uh, about we're, you know, we're pitching freshmen uh, midweek, which is true. We're pitching a lot of young guys, um, but we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine there. Uh, another text here on the Titan of our text line from Bobby in Leesburg, Virginia, says, Buddy, what are you needing to see in the Gator Spring game to make mm. you believe Billy Napier can still get it done? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to ask myself the same question, and I'm probably not going to see it in the same reason you say this, because what I want to see is the offensive line. I want to see blocking and tackling. You don't get to see a lot of that in the spring game. That will be the deciding factor. What I'm hearing has been encouraging. I listened to the entire Billy press conference. He definitely thinks he's found something. He's told reporters off the record that this is a really good football team. Off the record. He didn't know he spoke off the record. Apparently he did last week though, to a few reporters. I wasn't there. Um, I, I, I like I like Billy. We all like Billy, but he's got to produce. And he's apparently got a year to go to burn right now. So they're not expecting anything great out of him. Six, seven, one, seven ones would be a great season. Uh, but, you know, when does it get better? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I like some of the things I've seen on the team. The coaching seems to be better. They're, they're doing a lot of fundamentals and tackling, which the coaches and even Billy are talking about are much, much better. We know what has to be done. We've seen this movie before. It's, it's year three. He's got to get it going. So what I got to see is I want to see consistency at the quarterback position, which I'm pretty sure we will see. I want to see some talent at the wide receiver, which I'm pretty sure we'll see. I want to see improved offensive line, which I don't know if we'll see or not. I want to see some teams that the defense that will be capable of making stops on third down. Billy's kind of raved about the secondary. He's got a lot of young players and some good talent back there. Maybe short of linebacker. I think Nunnery's coming back. So that's a big plus, in my opinion. So what I want to see is upbeat. I want to see teams, I want to see players that are they're playing hard. I want to see fundamentals sound. And uh, well, I don't know how much we can tell, but if we need an upbeat spring game, it'll be played at the daytime for a change instead of on Thursday night, which is a terrible decision. And I think it'll be a better showing. And I, I, so so I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic about it, Shane, but I'm also reluctant. So let's say cautiously optimistic. Uh, we got a couple of YouTubes brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Michael says, Caitlin Clark is the female incarnation of Steph Curry, no doubt. Cameron says, great time for us to go 4-1 and one in baseball this week. Yeah, I expect us to, so we'll see. Hey, Shane, did you ever um, hear the thing. name? Did you ever hear the – excuse me, I'm interrupting you, but I'm having a sound issue back and forth to you for some reason. Did you ever hear of Haley Ashburn? I have not. This goes to show the status of women's sports. I Google and looked up most popular athletes, female athletes today uh, in American athletes. And your name Haley Ashburn came up as one of the top. You know what sport she plays? She's a climber. She, she thinks she, she's a climber. A, a climber. Mountain what col- that's, a, that's college sport. I don't know what it is. It's it's a well. I mean, it could be Olympic sports. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, you're right. I mean, Serena Williams is a pro uh, in college. I I just can't think of maybe one of those gymnasts. I don't know. What's the bone bowls have as his followers? I don't know. So anyway, I just love her. I wish her the best. And by the way, when you do get to the final four, and this is what's happened now to obviously to, uh, to Iowa, uh, the applications of schools now Iowa's got a pretty big population now, student body, but you know, over the years, the, the, uh, the, the schools have benefited tremendously. Remember Florida Gulf coast, their their big rubber year they had Sweet Sixteen, mm-hmm. their applications increased twenty seven point five percent. Butler, Butler's applications nearly tripled after two Final Fours. George Mason's inquiries went up three hundred fifty percent after beating Villanova. So obviously it's good for it's good for the school as well. Florida doesn't have that problem. They got plenty of people applying as who can get in. So, um, yeah, I'm anxious to see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful that this will be a good spring game and the baseball team will turn it around. And and uh, softball's got to pick it up a little too, Gene. It's not been the best of springs for the softball team. They're they're 29 and four, buddy. Mm-hmm. But they're but they're not winning the big games. So they've lost they've lost one conference game. Mm-hmm. 
Well, do you yeah. do you are you dis are you happy with the team while they've been playing losing? You damn right I am. I think it's one okay. of Tim Walton's best teams he's had in a long time. All right, but it's not showing up yet. We'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. Okay. Well twenty nine four is pretty damn good. Well no, it's no question, but we expect that of Tim Walton's teams, don't we? Right? See well that. yeah, but I mean you, you can you can only you can only win the games you play and um they swept Kentucky. They they took two out of three at Mississippi State. Uh, I take that back. They lost two SEC games. And they've uh, they went two out of three against uh, Alabama. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they have LSU this week, which will be great, great series. But I am extremely pleased with the softball. Oh, you may be right. I'm mean, a big fan. I understand that. I hope. Let's see what the, some of the other people say. I'm just hoping this will be a big year for them. And right now, I don't feel it. Okay. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bold, flavorful smoothies and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. We got Buddy Martin on the Titanmore hotline. Uh, text for him on the uh, Titanmore text line. Chris from Myaka says, Buddy, have you heard if Russ Calloway will be in the box during the game? No, I have not. I have not. Uh, I don't know what they'll do because the whole thing with, with that – the spring game, it may not be the same as it's going to be during game conditions. Um, I, I, you, you, Russ Calloway, I'm thinking, that's what we're talking about, right? The coach. So, yes. yeah. um, you know, he's certainly, the, he, he's got, he's got Billy's ear. He's his sort of confidant and all these, not, he's, what's his title? I've forgotten. He's not the offensive coordinator, if we know. Then the co-offensive coordinator, clearly he's going to have some say in, in what the play calling. But as you point out, a lot of these decisions are made during the week before the game about what you call situational football. And everybody has kind of agree on that. So I don't think it'll change that much. You've all, you said you had no problems with Billy's play calling. I think it'll be the same. Callaway will be a good guy to have in his ear. Uh, just, uh, I, I have no problem, but we have to throw it down the field eight times. Yeah. How many times? Eight? Is that what it is? Eight. Okay. Yeah. If we do that. Good things will happen. What's down the field? Um, Over 20? What, yeah, what's down like the field? 35, 30, 35 to 45 yards. 35 to 45. Okay. I like that. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Now everybody's questioning you, buddy, wanting to know what's what's going on. The, the, the softball team's 31 and 5. And okay. people are commenting saying, what's wrong with buddy? The softball team is better than the baseball team. Well, what, well, I, I'm not the one put out in the baseball team. You are. But the bottom line is I'm saying – I just expect no, them I'm to not have counting a... the baseball. The baseball team is ranked in the top five in America. Okay. And they have won every series. That is the goal is to win every but series. They're struggling, in Shane. Conference they're play. struggling. They're struggling in baseball. Okay, and losing well, midweek games. They're losing doubleheaders to FSU. They're losing to teams that you never heard of. I mean, really, it's just not the standard that I expect from Sully's baseball team. And in terms of the softball, there's plenty of time to turn that around. But I'd like to. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm. I just haven't seen that same zip or something with the, the softball team. It seems like they're getting losing games they shouldn't lose to me. That's just my opinion. I don't follow it like you do, but that's just well. My okay, so having having said they've lost five times mm-hmm. in 36 games. They've mm-hmm. lost to Oklahoma State once, which is a mm-hmm. top 10 team, right? A top ranked team. They lost to Mississippi State, who's in the top 25, once at their ballpark. They lost to Alabama once at their ballpark, uh, who's in the top 15 in America. So uh, softball is fine. Uh, I understand people's concern about baseball, but, again, I don't give two craps about the weekend. I don't care if they lose to FAMU tonight. I don't care. All I care about is them going to Missouri because that's all that matters. That is, And I know it sounds terrible, but that, does, that is all that matters when it comes to um, – Postseason play. Hmm. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, that's just my two cents for whatever it's worth. Um, we got a couple of, yeah, I wanted to bring this up if I can find it here. I don't know if anybody saw it. I think it was last night's game with the Rangers. Wyatt Langford was on first. Mm-hmm. Ground ball, to, they, they had a, the, the raised defense had a shift on. Mm-hmm. I believe it was a left hander batter up for the Rangers. Ground ball to the shortstop. Why round second, he notices that the catcher is down covering third base and tries to score and almost scores from first base on a ground ball to the shortstop. Think about that for a minute, buddy. Have you seen this play? I have not. I couldn't get the game last night. 
Okay, well, it's it's on Twitter. You you mm-hmm. can find it. But it, it's a tremendous effort play by Wyatt Langford. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody try it. Mm-hmm. He, he almost makes it, but the pitcher gets him at home. So mm-hmm. um, you got to check that out. I don't think of him as being a speedy guy. I mean, he's a good runner, but I don't think of him being a flash. He's fast. It must be. He's very yeah. fast. Yeah. Very fast. But he, he only tried it because of the shift and just his awareness right. and baseball IQ. Um so it was it was pretty He's cool a player. For sure. Hey uh, Shane, can before you I want to be sure and read the quote from Caitlin Card Clark about playing in the Sweet Sixteen because I think it's beautiful. So before you go off the air today, let me read this uh quote from her of what she said about playing. This is advice to every athlete. It's advice to us and life too as well, okay? Mm-hmm. She said Go ahead. No, that's you. I'm, I'm waiting here. on you, buddy. Aren't you going to read her quote? I'm waiting. I thought I heard Zach talking. All right. Hey, it's not about last year, she says. You worry too much about the past. You're going to get caught up in that. It's about being present, being where your feet are. Don't worry about being in the final four. Be in this moment. Be in the Elite Eight. Enjoy that. And soak that in. Great advice. Yeah, very true. What's in the past is the past, and I think you can do about it. That's why, you know, whatever happened last year in football, whatever happened last year in whatever sport, there has no correlation to this year. Mm-hmm. So uh, embrace the schedule and enjoy it and go play. Um, Greg says on Facebook Live, Billy hinted that Graham may have decided not to throw some deep passes when he had some chances. Uh, he may have said that. I disagree with that 1,000% watching the tape and stuff. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of deep balls called. I don't, know where, Greg, I don't know where he gets that from. I, I didn't hear that anywhere. Did you? You can't tell uh, No, that. I mean, I'm just reading what he said. So, okay. um, mm-hmm. Andy says, Mike Dicka said not to live in the past. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Caitlin Clark versus Paige Beckers. Uh, mm-hmm. And the final four will be much, much wa- must watch TV. This day in sports brought to you by Campus USA Credit. You put your star power to work in your financial life, Campus USA Credit. All right, this day in 2007, I was there at the NTA Men's Basketball Championship. The Mighty Gators took down Greg Oden and the Ohio State Buckeyes, 84 mm-hmm. 75 in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Back to back titles, Corey Brewer was named most outstanding player on this day in sports how about that buddy uh, were you there i was not at that game uh i followed that team later on but one thing i do i will say is i'm rooting for a yukon not to get there <laughs> because i don't want the gators to lose that that honor of having won it back to back but and that was not that was a wonderful time we were too stupid to appreciate and understand how great it was back in those days winning national championships with basketball and football like it was easy we got spoiled shane Yes, we did. Uh, Jonathan on the Titan Amar text line says, this is the first time in my life that I've heard 29 and four is terrible. What's Buddy drinking this morning? And I was wrong. It's their 31 and five. People okay. give you crap, Buddy, about the softball team. That's okay. They can give me crap. I'm going to say the same thing. I expect this to be a great, bat, a great softball team. So far, I don't have any assurance of that. It's a great record, but it's not just a record, Shane. You told me that before. It's not the record. I mean, the, the, obviously the baseball team, if it was a record, they'd be dead in the water. I'm not saying it's a terrible softball team. I'm just expecting more. Ask Tim, your buddy Tim. I'm sure he was expecting more out of some of those games too. They've got to step up. They, they, I mean, they've got to play better softball in this league because it's tough in the SEC. So I'm not down on the softball team. I'm not saying they're terrible. Don't put words in my mouth. You asked me about it. I said I wish they would step it up and let's see what that national championship team looks like. So that's all. I'm just not ready to well, say that. Well, here's the thing. They're in a, if, if you're talking about trying to win the national title, this is going to be David versus, versus Goliath, whoever mm-hmm. plays the Oklahoma Sooners. I mean, they are the premier softball team in, in the world. I mean, mm-hmm. it's crazy how good Oklahoma is. So um, I'm extremely pleased. They have great pitching this year. Two true freshmen studs, mm-hmm. and they got pop at the plate. Um, so they got a big weekend series. I think they play Stetson 
tomorrow, and then they got a weekend series against LSU, which will be a great test as well. But um, I think they're playing much better than the baseball team. I think they have a chance to go farther than the baseball team. Now, and I think the baseball team is going to have a great year. But softball is uh, dang good for sure. Um, Jeff says they have the best team they have had in years. I agree with that, Jeff, for sure. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself on excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. A few more minutes with Buddy Martin. We'll get Edgar Thompson. He'll have a lot of stuff coming from spring football, uh, getting ready for the orange and blue. Hey, Shane, who you got in the Masters, Shane? Uh, Well, that's not this weekend, but the following week. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it, and we'll do some Peachland Dental picks. Uh, JC and I will definitely do some picks for the Valero Open this weekend. Um, I haven't really thought about the Masters right yet, who I'm going to pick. Um, but it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite. It is my favorite sporting event. Mm-hmm. I should say that and the that is that and the SEC championship game are my favorite sporting events. Mm. Yeah, I'm, it, this is one of those odd years where the Masters usually is the first week, but it's not a full week. So this it's next week. I got confused earlier in this year thinking there was going to be this week, but it's not. It's next week. And, uh, I, I, one name got thrown out there. Uh, apparently I, I didn't know this. Apparently Kepka is being uh, touted and as a big favorite. And it's Kepka. We've lost track of mm-hmm. him. And I read where there's 14 LIV golfers that didn't make it. are going to be invited, but uh, Kepka is not a name we've, you know, I think about when I think about uh, the favorites, but we'll talk about that later. But just getting in it, just getting in it in, in the spirit of golf and again in the spirit of the Masters, which I've always loved this week. For for many years, Shane, I would leave, I would go on the basketball, uh, go cover basketball, and come back and then come back to uh, <clears throat> uh, get off the plane in Augusta uh, and go cover the Masters, and then uh, usually the last. <laughs> When the SEC, when the Orange and Blue game was the same week, I often flew home from Augusta and went to see the Orange and Blue game. I'm like having nut of my own that, but I just love the Masters. Mm-hmm. I spent, I went to like almost thirty of them, and I love the week. I love the tournament. I love the course. Golf needs that moment right now with all the problems we've had and the strife and the NIV and the split and all that. Need to see them all under one roof. Yep, for sure. I uh, got a couple people asking here about Carson. Carson went signing with the Chiefs. To my surprise, he stuck around. No, he's got a lot of experience. He's a guy that the coaches can count on. I don't think he's a starter, but solid backup. And Jeff Driscoll signed with the Redskins. Yeah, no, 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 no. He signed with the, with the Commanders. And so that's, that's well, that's that. There's the same damn thing. The Redskins. No, they're not. You I'm can't call them that. You can't call the Redskins. You know, here's what's funny about that. Somebody wrote about, gosh, is this an April Fool joke? Um, you know, the, the Driscoll sign with the Commanders, and someone said, "Who's Jeff Driscoll?" And somebody else said, "Who are the Commanders?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's hard to get to know. Yep, but they're the Redskins. I'm I got native. I'm half Cherokee. I got a lot of Cherokee in me, Indian in mm-hmm. me. So I don't give a damn what people say. They are the Redskins. Mm-hmm. There's the Cleveland okay. Indians, uh, the uh, Marquette yeah, Warriors, no, no. whatever. So all right, all right, buddy. <laughs> buddy, um, who you got on your program tonight? Um, we got we got Whitley is the and uh, Coach Lauren Meadows, and we'll see who else drops by. Uh, yeah, we'll talk a lot about uh, DJ Burns, man. What a, what a what a player he's turned out to be. I know what latest is. The NFL apparently is looking at him as offensive tackle. <clears throat> what his coach say? He's got a grizzly body, a grizzly body, and ballerina feet or something. Love that guy. He's been a great story. Yeah, he's a very talented kid. We're very uh, highly recruited kid coming out of high school. Buddy, good stuff as always, man. We'll talk to you next week. All right, thank you, Shane. That's Buddy Martin joining us on the Tight Number Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. Take a quick time out. We'll come back. We'll have Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel. You're watching and listening to Pato and Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melden Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, 
Live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. Dave & Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, Watch. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Domino's, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Silverback Concrete builds firm foundations for generations. You stand on it, we stand by it. We're going to go back to the Titan Number Hotline, and we're going to be joined by our man Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel, courtesy of Comfort Temp. What's happening, my man? Good morning, Shane. How's how's Mississippi? <laughs> Mississippi is great. It's uh, good to be back. It's uh, I love this state. You know, you know, this state produces more athletes in the National Football League per capita than any other state. Just remember that, Edgar. Put that in a story. No, that that's every good. year. Yeah. Hey, um, let's start with spring football. Um, we're getting closer to the orange and blue game, which I don't know what you can take out of that. Hopefully I was not around last year. Thank goodness. I know it was a disaster with the bad snaps, things of that nature. And, and, you know, what, what, what are you going to look for in this spring game or is there anything that you're looking for in the spring game? The spring game's not high on my list of, of, uh, things I covered in the course of a year. You don't get a lot out of it, I don't think, ultimately. I mean, I guess when Felipe uh, Franks threw three interceptions and four passes, that might have, like, told us something, and it kind of played out over the years. But you don't really look back on the spring game and go, oh, okay, that's where this guy kind of popped. But there's so many new pieces now, Shane. It's it's a little different, I guess, because there are going to be a lot of young guy or not young guys, just new faces that are going to contribute because of the transfer portal. So maybe you do get more out of the spring game. You know what I mean? It's like they're going to be a yeah. lot more guys that are going to be impactful because Felipe wasn't even going to play the next year anyway. So. I just always go back to that one, man. That was just like, whoa. You know, this big guy, they flipped from LSU and goes, just had a nightmare day. And it kind of proved his decision-making over the years just was was not up to par. But um, there's a lot of new guys. I'll tell you a guy, and Billy mentioned him after the scrimmage the other day. They had their first scrimmage Saturday. They have another one this week, then they have the spring game. So they're going Saturday, Saturday, Saturday with scrimmages is Pup Howard. I'm kind of intrigued with mm-hmm. him. 
And he mentioned him the other day, and Billy doesn't single out guys very much. So the fact that he singled him out as a guy who made a lot of plays the other day, yeah, I, they need a they need a playmaking linebacker. I think Shamar James is pretty good and could be really good, but he was hurt most of last year. He hurt his knee in, in camp, if you recall, then dislocated the kneecap. And he was obviously a big loss because they played Arkansas the week after he got hurt and lost to a team that had one in the SEC. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Maybe I'm, I'm intrigued with this DJ Douglas, the safety from Tulane. I don't know why uh, I don't haven't really seen him. I don't, I know my a buddy of mine who covers Tulane said he was quite good last year and he's had a long path, former walk on at Alabama I mean, defense is the key, man. You talk about you talked about it on here. Yeah, they're going to be no question about it. If they're going to be decent this year, or they're going to win six or seven or eight or whatever, and not four or five against that brutal schedule, it's going to come down to how the defense plays. So I'm going to keep have my eyes on some defensive guys mainly. I agree 100 percent with that comment. No question about it. Um, we have a couple of texts for you, Edgar, here on the Titan of our text line. Brett and Jax wants to know why you guys in the media, why don't you guys in the media have a microphone at Billy's presser so we can hear it? Oh, is you guys can't hear us? Okay. Uh, I'll pass that along. Um, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be a, a, a UAA deal where they set up the mic? Yeah. Well, so we did this the other day, if, if he's referring to the press conference from Saturday, it was in the southeast end zone and like a post game. Typically, we have the hot mic and Billy's like tonight. We'll talk to coaches in the Gator room or it's not the Gator room, but in the Havener. And um, th that's more audible. But maybe it isn't. Reply if you're still on here watching. Can you hear us on the Tuesday, Thursday press conferences better? Because I'll pass that along. Rick Hurtado will take care of it. Rick's yeah, very conscientious sure. about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, another text here on the Titan Amar text line from Sheldon. He says, Shane, I know your thoughts on NIL. How crazy is it to you with the vehicles that Mertz and Lagway drive? Um, I know I know Graham drives a uh, Range Rover. What's like? Do you know what Lagway drives, uh, Edgar? I don't really want to get into all this. I mean, I heard he's driving a very high-end luxury automobile that from England, I believe that's where the company is. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it was flown in from England, but the point, yeah, the, look, man, I saw Graham's car in the parking lot at the golf course the other day. I went to hit some balls and there's a black Range Rover with Kansas plates. I don't think there are many of those in town. <laughs> it's a, right, it's a right. Star. But you go through that parking lot, it's like walking through the showroom at a, a luxury automobile place. This isn't, again, I made this comment on here, I believe. I've made it other times. When Anthony Richardson got the the kind of, when it, when it had kind of a powder blue charger, right? Mm -hmm that he you know went too fast in the one time or whatever that was like whoa that's pretty nice and everyone was like god you know he's getting a car that that was like abnormal or an anomaly early on in nil now that that would be a jalopy in the parking lot now <laughs> the cars are yeah. high end trevor etn the car he drove last week when he got in his his uh trouble is a hundred plus thousand dollar Audi that goes zero to 60 in three seconds, according to the reporting. Why do you, why do you, that, like, I said, I think I said to you when we were talking about coming on the show, that's like Denny Hamlin maybe can drive a car like that without getting in trouble or wrecking it. Forget, forget like speeding. I mean, th these kids are putting themselves in danger with these cars. Yeah. They're too, they're just, it's just, I don't understand why it's got to be that. Now, I'm not just some old guy who's like, you know, you know, didn't get mine, whatever. 
I, you know, I make I make ends meet, whatever. I drive a decent car. I'm not I'm not complaining that these people are. Someone explain this to me, Shane, this way. If you're a football player and you are looking down the street west at the tennis complex, which is very nice, and there are the, all these tennis players, you know, playing, or you're looking south at the softball, very nice facility, I mean, lacrosse, excuse me, the lacrosse field, very nice. And you have people coming from all parts of the country, even out of the country, in the case of tennis, in some cases, and they're enjoying the spoils of college athletics and having success and not really high risk of injury an ACL potentially, but ankles and things, nothing that's any fun, but you're a football player you're going out every week, every Saturday, and you are lo- literally putting your neck on the line. Like you can really get hurt. And you're paying for all this and you're getting nothing. Forget forget what the coaches get and all that argument. You're paying for everybody on campus to enjoy college athletics that aren't really risking that much. That these kids should be paid or should be getting something. I It's hard to argue. I agree. But did that mean, you know, luxury automobiles and things like that. I don't know that that's really necessary. It's not, it's not at all. Um, we had a couple of questions here regarding uh, the team. Uh, I want to know if Billy's talked about tank Hawkins speed and if they will throw down Phil more this year. Well, interesting. I, I asked about tank last week or so. No, I asked Ricky Parasol pro day about him. He said, the guy's a jet. Yeah, he is supposed to be super fast. Aiden Mizell's flashed a couple times. I've been at practice, and he was supposed to be as fast or faster than anyone on the team last year. And Tank might. Tank looks like a little tank. He's like a little, like, fire plug, man. He's not, like, long. Like, Mizell looks like a long, like, sprinter type, and he's filled out a little bit more. Or more like a, you know, 400 runner. Tank is like a, I mean, he's packed. He, lo- he looks like he's very explosive. I-, I look forward to seeing him. And on the point of throwing downhill, uh, excuse me, downfield, he talked about Graham the other day. Let me find this comment. But he was talking about Graham showed. I'm, look- I'm looking it up. I had the thing here. Okay, here it is. Um, talking about how typically the quarterback sets the pace. He's done a great job of that in terms of just being a leader, et cetera. He's done that. We are trying to get Graham to be more aggressive without being careless. The narrative on him coming in, obviously everybody talked about the interceptions at Wisconsin and all that. He proved he could play clean ball last year, and now he's trying to improve the calculated risk. Let's try to be aggressive and manage the game and eliminate careless mistakes, but let's create more explosives and distribute the ball like a point guard pushing the ball down the court. So you're you're happy to hear that. And so Grant, uh, Billy's acknowledging that, that yes, he played very efficiently, but now it's time to like push the ball. Last year, they had 14 completions of 30 yards or longer. Only Mississippi State had fewer in the SEC at 13, and Mississippi State was awful. So they did not push the football down the field last year, as you pointed out. Pretty much every halftime I saw you and pretty much on every podcast I've been on. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I I have no problems with Billy's comments there, but it was he wasn't asked to push it down the field a lot. There were not opportunities for the most part. So uh, they need to call him and let him push it down the field. Tim's question on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. DJ Lagway versus Graham Merch in the screen game in 2024. I'm going to go out on a limb right now and tell you Graham Mertz is the starting quarterback and DJ Lagway will play just a little bit, in my opinion, this year, if at all. What do you think about that, Edgar? Think about, I mean, with all due respect to the question, um, and and look, we don't get in there to see much either, to be honest. So, Maybe things are happening we don't know. Or, But Billy was pretty honest the other day about DJ 
Bill, Billy's getting a little more comfortable. If people are watching these press conferences, he doesn't come at you. Like he's not super dynamic. He's in all this. But he's he's saying more, I think, now than he has, or maybe I'm hearing more now. But he said the next step for him is a game management piece. Okay. And he joked that he asked him if he played poker growing up. If you play Texas Hold'em, you get a three and a four, you fold your cards and go to the next hand. He obviously didn't play poker growing up basically <laughs> so and he went on from there you can go watch if you want more but but then he said he's a quick learner he picks up on the offense he made some plays with his feet played with the twos most of the days that's where he's at so he's playing with the twos making plays with his feet not playing poker it sounds like he's forcing things is at the point mm-hmm. Hold your cards go to the next hand He's got the physical talent. He's picking up quickly. Now it's just about the game management piece, which means he's kind of forcing things and he can make things happen with his feet and needs to learn the passing game more. And he's got a good guy to mentor him in Graham Mertz. Graham Mertz is the undisputed starter of this football team. I don't think there's any question. They need to keep the pocket clean around him, as you said, call more plays downfield. And and hopefully guys like Mizell, Tank, uh, and then some of the returning guys, you know, they they have some receivers that are returning with some – I mean, Eugene Wilson, I wrote a big piece on the other day. I spoke to his dad and uh, spoke – wrote on him. But, yeah, they're going to miss Ricky Pearsall. You and I were talking about that for sure. And somebody's going to have to emerge there as kind of the alpha. Yeah, I mean, Pearsall – like I've said multiple times, in my opinion, he's a top 10, top 15 receiver to ever play at this school. Redwood is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. All right, um, one last question for football before we move on real quick, Edgar. Uh, mm-hmm. Running back room. A lot of people were concerned when ETN left. I'm not one of those. I think we have some really good running backs. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to like the room. For sure. Uh, and mine, Charles Johnson's very solid. I mean, I'm I'm hoping Cam Carroll can stay healthy because I was excited about him last year as a pass catcher, particularly. Trayon Webb, uh, you, you know, you have the two freshmen. This Jordan Baugh is like six feet, like 238 and can move. I mean, he's just a tank. You buy a tank. He is the tank. He's a tank. Tank Hawkins a little, is kind of a little guy, explosive guy. Uh, and then, and then uh, Daniels. I don't, I don't want to say his first name. The Mississippi kid. You talk, that kid mm-hmm. is explosive. I mean, go look at his numbers from last year. They're absurd. Then he rushed for like two fifty in the tight state title game, and he he. So they have a bunch of options, but Trevor Etienne I thought was pretty special. He had some acceleration, and his footwork was really. Pretty impressive. So we'll see. I I don't think it's like a huge loss because you can offset it. But it would be nice to have that kind of home run threat in the backfield. Yeah, I I, I love the freshman, though. Uh, Again, Tim, once ago, y'all did not answer Graham Mertz versus Lagway. There's no competition there, Tim. Graham Mertz He's the undisputed starter, I said, I think. Not even close. (laughs) Not even close. Um, All right. Let's talk softball real quick because uh, I know you're going to write some, a story on softball. Are you writing it about a specific girl or no, about I, the program? I, I mean, I don't have to. I just kind of thinking the they, the program has been subpar by the standard, the high standard set. You know, winning national titles, going to the World College World Series, and they won back to back, and then played for a third against Oklahoma. What was that, 15, 16, 17, I believe, uh, losing in 17. And it's been, and then it was pretty good. And then the last couple of few years, just kind of subpar. I, I, I don't have it in front of me getting out of regionals or whatever. They did make the College World Series, I believe, one of those years. But now it's. Yeah, they made it last year. Huh? Last year it didn't. They didn't last year or the year before? Yeah. The year before, I think they made the College World Series like an 11 seed or 
something, but they haven't been like top 10, top five. Now they're, they're back in the top 10, moving toward the top five. They're 31 and five. They just won two out of three at Mississippi State, which was, you know, ranked 17th, I believe. Good wins and comeback wins. They, they just, they, they have a young arms, Ava Brown and Rothrock, the, you know, Keegan Rothrock, these two young women are giving them the pitching they haven't had, which has been the issue, right? Ava Brown, Rothrock, they're giving them pitching oh, yeah. they did not have. And then you got Skylar Wallace, who's just setting records every time she goes up to the plate almost. And she's, she's just a stud. And then Kendra Falby is a very good player. And I mean, Josh, uh, Jocelyn Eckerson, the catcher, I believe that's her name. I'm trying to find. Yes, yeah, transfer from Oklahoma. Yeah, yep. she's good. So they, they have sure. players, man. And it looks like they're back to, the, you know, the Gator standard, you know, that Tim Walton has set. And the guy's a great coach. He's one of the few best. And the program's going, man, they're, they're jamming, man. 31 and 5, 7 and 2 in the SEC. I haven't seen them play. Uh, they're playing LSU this weekend. I might slip out there for one of those games. LSU is highly ranked, three games at home, big series. So I'll tell you this, man, Jack Caglione or Caglione is having, he's incredible. The other day yeah. through whatever five, six innings, a pretty strong ball and then hits the walk off, right? No hit, no hit Mississippi State, I think through like four innings maybe. And then hits a walk off home run to win four three. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a stud. There's no question about it. Uh, maybe the best baseball player we've ever had. I would put him and Brad Wilkerson, but he's got a lot more pop than Brad, and a much better athlete than Brad as well. Edgar, uh, good stuff as always, my man. Uh, let everybody know how they can follow you on Twitter and read the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, OS Gators on Twitter. <clears throat> I got locked out of Twitter, Shane, for like five days. I have not, as I said last time I was on here, I haven't been on Twitter much lately, but five days away from it actually I, it made me miss it because I got a new phone and got locked out of it. Uh, I, I never I thought I'd miss Twitter, but then I did. <laughs> yeah, Gary Checks here on the Titan Mark Text line. I want to know will you be going to the Masters to cover it? Oh, I wish I were. No. I won't. I have only one time. I tell you, it was it was amazing. They really have exiled the media, though. I hear they have moved the media center. It's so far away. You got to shuttle to everything. It sounds like a total hassle to cover, but it's the Masters. I'd take a little hassle to be up there among the azaleas. I will be watching them. <laughs> you ain't lying. All right, good stuff as always, Edgar. We appreciate your time, my man. Have a great day. Thanks, Shane. That's Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel. Join us on the Titan Mall Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Camp. Hope you had a great day, folks. Uh, we'll see you here, same place, same time tomorrow. Take care.